My name is Dr. Thomas Smith. I have been here for 20, almost 21 years. So MVU was founded, I believe, in around 1957, and it started at Tower Grove Baptist Church uh, near Botanical Gardens. It wasn't until 1964 that we uh, purchased this campus here, which is where we began to construct buildings. And actually, um, we were an extension of Hannibal LaGrange College, and we petitioned to, to actually be a separate institution, and, that, and they made that happen. I believe that the first sports that Missouri Baptist had was bowling, and then they moved into basketball. There was actually a bowling court at, at, uh, at the church there in, in South County, or South St. Louis there. And then they moved into basketball, and then eventually they moved into baseball. So from day one when I came in as athletics director, somehow there was somewhere around 285 student athletes. Uh, where now we have 888 on scholarship. So basically what I did was I enhanced the enrollment model that we had with some of the things I had learned as, as running at the admissions office and recruiting prospective students. And we began a process to add more programs on for the sake of increasing enrollment at the college. But in the back of my mind, I knew that if we could start football, um, and use the same model that we, that, we, that we did with wrestling, looking at the market and just tweaking up the scholarships a little bit, that we would have a great chance of having a large athletic contingent here. And so, uh, but in order to start football, we had to pay attention to Title IX, which is gender equity, and make sure that we were providing equal opportunity for females as well as males. And so that's all the way back then. Uh, we started, I started in my brain thinking how can we get football and we started adding sports. So we, we added men and women's bowling, we added women's cross country, we added women's track, we added women's lacrosse, then men's lacrosse, uh, and so forth. We just kept going up the line adding sports and, and eventually added women's wrestling, which we were the fifth uh, school in the nation to do that. So that was all in preparation of starting football. During that time, somewhere around 2006, I did a feasibility study about what it would cost for football. And once we, uh, we did that, we saw it was going to be enormous. Then in 2010, I did another feasibility study to try to convince uh, some of the administrators to start the uh, football, but we weren't prepared to do it quite yet. So then in 2012, um, we did another feasibility study uh, based on the president's uh, request, and we decided to make the leap. So the question is, is what are the benefits and struggles once we had the football in place at the university? Well, the benefits are very obvious. Uh, obviously, we're going to infuse another 100 student athletes on the campus. And statistically, every football player is going to bring at least two more students uh, to the university. And so now we're, we enhance our, our, our spirit cheer team. We can enhance the competitive cheer. We can enhance the dance program. We can take another look at marching band or a pep band and see if there's, you know, how we can infuse uh, the fine arts in, into, the, into the mix. Uh, and the other thing is just the ability to use the social media to get alumni who, are, who have been waiting for a long time for something like this to happen. So the benefits were just enormous. For example, most of the time before we built the, the Sport Rec Center, we would have somewhere in the area of 50 people coming to our events. Well, now it's really not uncommon to have 500 um, uh, uh, fans to, to have an experience here indoor. And then at the football games, within the second game, we were, we were you know, probably approaching 17, 1,800 fans. The downside, however, though, is just the culture of football in the United States. Uh, you know, there's, there, there's a perception that, that football is just, you know, that, that the focus will be more on, on having a successful football team. You would probably see that at the NCAA Division I level. But with, when, at an NAIA level, our emphasis was not going to be on football. It was going to be on giving student athletes an opportunity to participate. But comes, coming with that is you, you have the thug concept or you have people that aren't serious about their education. You, you have potential um, uh, division among athletic programs who maybe have some jealousy because uh, their program was not emphasized as much. Uh, but we've been really successful at, at, at um, vetting our coaching staff and making sure that everybody understands that the first thing that's most important to us is the mission uh, of the university and the academics of the student-athletes. So we're going to talk about the football facility and renting facilities from other uh, venues when you're hosting a football. 
I do remember that I actually met with the head football coach at least three times uh, off campus without anybody knowing about it until I was convinced in, in my mind that, that he, was, he could be the right person for the position. And that's hard to find. It really is hard to find. But, but after, after meeting with him, I introduced him to the president. But the entire process, I had two things that were on my brain. One is to make sure that that individual, whoever it was going to be, knew that we would never, ever, ever build a football facility. That was not going to happen. Within a very short period of time, after making the proposal in 2012 and the Board of Trustees adopting the proposal and then making an announcement to the press in early February of 2013, um, very shortly after that, I think the president got so excited about football that he, that he decided that we needed to build a facility. And, uh, it, but it was really challenging that first year because we didn't have anything. And so in our little storage room, we, we made, did a makeshift equipment room. And you, at that point, we had like 60 to 80 student athletes. And you know, we ordered all the supplies, which is just maddening in itself. The, the amount of effort that goes into starting a football program cannot be, uh, cannot be uh, overestimated. It is a huge endeavor. After building a new facility that is beginning to liberate us, it's only a practice facility. There are two phases to that, and we have finished phase one. Uh, it's an artificial surface, one of the best you can get in the country, but we have two large locker rooms that we utilize pre-game and post-game. Uh, but we can't compete out there because it, that requires permits and bleachers and public restrooms, official locker rooms, concession stands, and all those things, security, uh, all that, sound system, scoreboard. But it's been great because it's really taken a lot of pressure off of CBC. It's given our football coaches a place that they can house their coaching staff. They can have classrooms there. We have a small athletic training facility, a huge equipment and laundry room. So in essence, besides not competing there, we still get to practice. We can virtually do everything and take some pressure off for some of our other sports by doing some soccer and lacrosse uh, practices as well out there. So when I think of two, well, three significant dates in the history of football on this campus, I can even say four. The first one was when the Board of Trustees approved it because that has been my passion since the day I took over athletics. Um, I think that we have a president that made it happen and, and, and he was wise in the timing um, and it took a lot of work. That was historical date number one. Number two was making that announcement to the press. Once we emerged our coach, we had a first full-fledged press conference here and we had all the media here. We invited our CBC friends and we actually used that as a, a normal chapel service. So the gym was jam-packed. We, we uh, flew the coach in, uh, his parents in. We went out and bought brand new helmets and presented helmets to significant people that had a role. Uh, that was a great day. It hit all the news stations and, and we were launching into a new journey. Um, the third significant date was when we finally dedicated the, uh, the football field. And I do remember uh, planning that. We had a bunch of new shovels and we had trustees out there and dignitaries and alumni and uh, a few of us got to speak, the football coach, the president, myself. Uh, but we, we sent the entire football team up the, uh, uh, up the trail to get to the football field. And I remember our uh, senior vice president and chief financial officer, Ken Revenal, he was excited. He wanted to show the football team the trail. And everybody was excited. It was just an electric day as we, as we, as we did that out, in, uh, out there uh, um, at the football field. The time before that was just breaking ground, making our way up there and seeing us just start, start a shovel and breaking ground. Just exciting times. So we're halfway through. I think that it won't be maybe two, three years, and then we'll have a full-fledged facility. And it will, I know that if I'm still alive 30 years from now, 40 years from now, that I'm gonna come back to something that I'll be able to look with pride at, at a, a fantastic athletic staff that really made it happen by recruiting all those teams, by, by um, you know, doing, it, doing it the right way, by making sure that we, we are presenting a gender equity program and doing it with class and having integrity. I don't think that we could be more proud of what Missouri Baptist and the Spartan family have done for this university.